Today, we're going to cover the real life story of a criminology professor turned criminal. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Joe the Lawyer. I'm your host, Joe Pometto. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I also do family law, personal injury, all kinds of law here in Pittsburgh, PA. On this channel, I cover legal news, legal issues, and talk about legal things. If you like my channel, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show. I do this on my other channel, but everybody clamors for it. Before we dig into this story and this video of the criminology professor who turns criminal, have a sip with me. The same time sip. Raise your cup, your glass in the air. Let's go Pens Hockey. Cheers. Ah, delicious. So this story is especially fascinating to me. I was scrolling down uh, my newsfeed on a certain channel and um, I came across the story of a criminology professor who was recently arrested for setting wildfires, therefore committing the crime of arson in California. Let's watch the news clip on it real quick. Fire crews are trying to get the upper hand on the Dixie fire. That's the one burning out of control in Northern California. This morning, we've got new details on how that massive fire might have started. As Valina Jones reports, a college professor is facing arson charges for allegedly sparking another blaze in the area. As the Dixie Fire continues to burn through Northern California, a college professor is accused of starting multiple fires near the area. Just charged with one so far, but clearly... They're building their case. In a 32-page federal criminal complaint, 47-year-old Gary Menard is charged with purposely setting the ranch fire in Lassen County this month. U.S. Forest Service agents started investigating him July 20th, the day of the Cascade Fire. Investigators eventually placing a tracking device on his car after a witness there says they saw Menard come from the area where the fire sparked, saying he appeared mentally unstable, quote, mumbling a lot and having bipolar like behavior while tracking his movements they believe he started more than two fires explaining it appeared that menard was in the midst of an arson setting spree attorney mark reichel spent a decade defending federal cases including arson they really went quickly to get warrants on his phone the tracker for his vehicle and they kept this person as a big suspect right away. Court documents suggest the suspected arsonist at one point worked at Santa Clara University. Sonoma State confirms he also taught at their university in fall of 2020, specializing in criminology and criminal justice. Menard denies the allegations. Once arrested, he told officers, quote, I'm going to kill you, pig. I didn't start any of those fires. A professor once specializing in crimes, now accused of committing his own they're going to try to put a map up to say this is somebody who had a goal and the goal was to set a lot of fires hoping there'd be just one big one well california's biggest wildfires leading to widespread evacuations of livestock and urgent efforts to Okay, so there's a little bit more to the story there. We're uh, talking about livestock. Um, we all know there's been wildfires raging throughout California. Now, it appears there is a college professor setting them. Let's dig a little deeper into the story. This is from NPR. Um, a former college professor accused of serial arson is denied bail in California. And you heard during the news clip, these are federal charges, which means they're going to carry a whole lot of sentencing time, a lot of prison time. Uh, arson, maybe people don't realize this. Um, I, I think most people do. But, you know, when I came into law, I was a little bit naive about how serious a charge of arson is. So in Pennsylvania, there's different gradings of arson. So there's actually, there's there's very minor arson offense, which is like a summary offense, which can carry, you know, 30 days in jail, um, you know, a little bit of a fine just for, just for setting like a tiny fire, all the way up to felony arson with intent to kill, which is basically a murder charge or an attempted homicide charge. So arson Arson is a very, very serious crime that can carry a lot of jail time. This guy is probably in a lot of trouble. There's a lot of political...
political pressure right now uh, to punish people who are starting these forest fires because they're just causing massive damage and it's at epidemic levels out west. So let's dig into the story a little bit here. Um, Firefighters battling the Dixie Fire have been facing a second enemy, a serial arsonist who went on a spree of setting fires in July and August and who sought to trap fire crews with his fires, according to agents from the U.S. Forest Service. Wow. See, that sounds to me like arson with intent to kill. The alleged former college professor Gary Maynard is the culprit citing their trafficking of his movements in other evidence where Maynard went fire started not just once but over and over again the government said arguing for Maynard to be denied bail a judge agreed to the request during a brief hearing Wednesday saying there are no conditions or combination of conditions that would provide the necessary level of safety to this community should the defendant be released and let me make clear to everyone there are people accused of shooting attempted homicides okay who do receive some sort of bail this gentleman is being denied bail outright just shows you how dangerous fire and arson is right it kills without regard for anybody he added based on that finding the defendant will be detained as a risk of non of non-appearance and a danger to the community Maynard's next court appearance is scheduled for August 24th While court documents allege Maynard is connected to more than a half dozen dangerous fires in Northern California, he is currently charged with starting only the ranch fire. That blaze broke out on Saturday morning in a remote area, according to court records. Maynard had just camped for the night. It's one of three fires that officials said Maynard set in recent days, all of them close to the Dixie Fire's northeastern footprint. He entered the evacuation zone and began setting fires behind the first responders fighting the Dixie Fire, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Sacramento said in court papers. Maynard's fires were placed in the perfect position to increase the risk of firefighters being trapped between fires. This is an attempted homicide charge, essentially. Maynard's alleged offenses show he is particularly dangerous even among arsonists. Most arsonists probably set one fire here and there. Uh, This guy, multiple fires with an intent to trap and kill firefighters, first responders. If it weren't for the surveillance federal agents were conducting on Maynard, the fires would have been much worse and the risk to firefighters would have been greater, the document said. Now, this is interesting. Maynard was identified after his car got stuck near a fire, court records say. Maynard, 47, is a former professor who has taught at colleges in New York and California, according to online records. Last fall, he taught in criminology and criminal justice department. That's why I'm covering this, folks. That's why I'm covering this, which says it's in his official bio for Maynard that he has a doctorate in sociology and three master's degrees. His teaching and research, the school said, focuses on topics that topics that include the sociology of health, deviance, and crime while he's out there acting as a deviant and criminal. He might want to do a case study on himself. Maynard also has connections to other schools from Stony Brook University in New York to Santa Clara University where he taught. Maynard, on July 20th, was spotted near the scene of the Cascade Fire on the western slopes of Mount Shasta. A mountain biker in those woods had noticed signs of a fire, called 911, and then worked to limit the fire's spread. Uh, good for him. Sounds like a uh, everyday hero. A forest service fire investigator determined the Cascade Fire was likely the result of arson. He also noticed on a dirt road 150 to 200 yards from the fire, a man was struggling to free his car. A black Kia Soul after the vehicle's rear had failed to clear a partially buried boulder. A witness told investigators that the man, later identified as Maynard, had arrived several hours before the fire started, court records showed. The witness said the man had walked off in the direction of where the fire eventually ignited, returning about 10 minutes later. Poof! Well, there you go. After the man returned, the witness recalled, smoke from the Cascade fire became visible. The investigators kept it, kept his distance from Maynard, citing the man's uncooperative and agitated behavior. But he took a picture of, a, of his car and the license plate number led to Mr. Maynard. 
Forest Ser Service agents also measured and recorded data about the tire tread pattern left by Maynard's car, evidence that they say ties him to a string of arson wildfires. That's some good investigative work there. We'll take a little look at the complaint in a second. Tracking an arson suspect. In an affidavit uh, requesting an arrest warrant, Special Agent Boland said he used a variety of means to learn more about the suspect from internet searches that turned up his ties to colleges to inqu inquiries with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The USDA, Boland says, confirmed Maynard had an electronic benefits transfer account. Tracing his use of the card at grocery stores, I believe this is like SNAP benefits or welfare, the Forest Service was able to place Maynard close to the time and place where a number of fires were set, according to Bullen's affidavit. So he's driving around Northern California, going to grocery stores, eating food, and starting fires. The EBT account showed Maynard made purchases at a Safeway in Fortuna, California, and then a week later at a Safeway in Susanville, 260 miles across the state, just east of the Lawson National Forest where the Dixie Fire erupted in mid-July. Since Maynard's car was registered in San Jose, Bullen also contacted San Jose police, which passed along a 2020 warning from a colleague who reported her concern for Maynard's well-being, citing a severe mental health crisis. Crucially, the police agency shared Maynard's cell phone number, which was later confirmed to be linked to his EBT account, according to the affidavit. Part of an arson setting spree. Investigators said they connected Maynard to a string of fires as early as the Bradley fire that destroyed over 300 acres on July 11th and possibly as early as the July 6th Sweetbriar fire. Both of those blazes struck in the Mount Shasta area northwest of Lawson where the Dixie fire is still raging. In recent days, authorities said Maynard set numerous fires in the Lawson area, part of an arson setting spree. This part's interesting here from an evidentiary perspective. In late July, Forest Service agents grew, grew so concerned about Maynard's actions, they also asked Verizon Wireless for 15-minute updates on his location 24 hours a day. Eventually, an agent also installed a tracker on his car. They used that data to follow behind Maynard, putting out several fires and gathering evidence that would link him to the blazes. Investigators also obtained warrants requiring Verizon to preserve evidence from the cell phone accounts that could show his movements. So the 15 minute pings can be tracked to show exactly where he was and they're going to have his, his entire path of movement um, to link him to each of these fires. On Saturday, Lawson County Sheriff's deputies arrested Maynard after, after the California Highway patrol officer pulled him over for driving in an emergency closure area. Maynard denies starting the fires. This man is obviously severely mental, mentally ill. After his arrest, Maynard told Forest Service agents he didn't start any of the fires. He was then booked into Lawson County Jail on, viol on a charge of violating a state law that forbids entering a closed emergency area. But later Saturday, a deputy told him a federal felony arson charge was being added. Angry Maynard insisted he is innocent. I'm going to kill you, F. I told those F. I didn't start any of those fires, he said to the deputy. Maynard later was transferred to Sacramento County Jail. He had a brief court appearance on Tuesday and a detention hearing on Wednesday. In the days before he was taken into custody, Maynard allegedly set the moon fire on August 5th, as well as the ranch and Conard fires. Wow. Just wow. Um, the interesting thing here is the, the fact that he's a criminology professor. Now, I can tell that, you know, obviously it appears uh, for all indications that this man was severely mentally ill. Now, will that be used in his defense? Uh, probably it will be, though it will likely have a greater impact on what his final sentence is rather than proving his innocence. It's going to be pretty difficult to prove his innocence. So I imagine he's going to take a plea in exchange for going to some sort of a mental health facility rather than spending the rest of his life in jail. But let me tell you, this man is in serious, serious trouble. Arson is a very serious crime. Now, the weird thing here, I'm going to do some speculation, is he's a criminology professor. So he's studying criminals later in life, has a mental health crisis 
And and, 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 and does, is that association association what turned him into a criminal, right? A person who studies criminals and then when their mental health breaks down, they turn into the exact thing that they studied or perhaps that they fought against. Though he's not a law enforcement officer, so he wasn't fighting against the criminal mind. He was studying the criminal mind. And I just can't help but have that curious nature that him studying it and studying crimes for so long somehow had a causal effect on what what manifested in this individual once he had a, a, extreme mental health distress. It's too bad that those issues couldn't be addressed later. I would be fascinated to see whether he had a history of arson. Sometimes arson is my understanding. Um, it is something that they did as a child or you can see a pattern of it throughout their life. I wonder if this guy had those early signs of being an arsonist. And, you know, this show is Joe the Lawyer. I'm interested in criminology, legal issues, etc. This is a fascinating case here. Um, who here has seen the movie Carlito's Way? The reason I bring that up, I've always found that movie interesting because um, one of the, the main characters is a guy, who Carlito, who sort of caught up in organized crime, all right, and his, his best buddy, who is an attorney. Now, this lawyer, this criminal defense ator- attorney, okay, is helping Carlito out, helping him get clear to his charges, okay, but living in that world, this lawyer in 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 this or in organized crime world, what happens to the lawyer? Eventually, the lawyer becomes a criminal too, and it's just the his proximity to being in that world sucks him into it. Right? There's a little more to it than that, but uh, it, it it's it's fairly basic. It's the lawyer being so involved in in crime and criminal defense in this organized crime world and being friends with all these gangsters, he eventually becomes a gangster himself. And I can't help seeing uh, traces of that um, in this story here. And uh, it just goes to show if you have a profession, you can't allow that to consume you or be your end all be all, right? Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have your own life that keeps you on a nice and stable track going forward. Listen to me, a, a workaholic here saying this. <laughs> and you gotta remember not to take, you know, you need to take your work very seriously, but at the same time, you gotta take it not so seriously, um, but also keep your moral compass on straight no matter what. Because I, I just see the traces here of uh, this attorney gaunt breaking bad in, in, in this professor who is breaking bad, which is another uh, great show that we can link to this individual. And I don't know uh, how many of you here have seen Carlito's Way, but the individual, Sean Penn plays the attorney, Dave Kleinfeld. And I just, I love how he looks. I love how he looks. There he is. There is Sean Penn. <laughs> <laughs> as this gangster attorney in Carlito's way. And uh, he just, he looks freaking awesome in that movie. So um, interesting story or fascinating. A lot of these fires are going to be linked to this guy. Sad, tragic, a college professor, mentally, mentally ill, also breaking bad at a time when the world is going uh, wrong in so many different ways. Um, he's probably going to get the book thrown at him. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I'm Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. If you like this show, please like, subscribe, comment, share. It's a free way to support the show. I know I went a little longer today, but I hope you found my connections and my analysis interesting. All right, everybody, have a terrific night. Bye-bye.